Hey guys, welcome back. And this time I'm surrounded by a whole bunch of filament dryers. Some that have been sent to me for review, some that I've bought with my own money. And well, let's talk about this. I mean, it, do you really need to use a filament dryer under, you know, what kind of environments or conditions? What do they do? Are they just full of hot air? Are you ready? Let's do this. Hey, welcome back. Well, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Paul. This is my channel where nerdy is cool. I'm all about 3D printers, 3D printer reviews, upgrades, filaments. I'm big into cosplay. I've got all kinds of cool builds that I've done. So let's stop there. 90% of you guys are not subscribers. So I would love it if you hit the button down below and become a subscriber. I would love to cross the 10,000 mark. And I wouldn't be offended one bit if you gave me a like. So moving on, here we go. So we have a whole bunch of filament dryers and I'm sure you've seen on your various YouTube feeds or your Reddit or Facebook groups and the various subgroups in there, people talking about the pros and cons of filament dryers. Some people, no, 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 you don't need it. It's, it's, not, it's a waste of money. And others will point out that no, they actually, they, they really do have their uses. Um, we all know that certain filaments are more hygroscopic, meaning they pull in moisture. So, and there's all kinds of information and let me pull it up on screen right now. So the manufacturer iBoast, they make, uh, actually they make this one right here. They have a really great web page here and they talk about why you need an Abos filament dryer. And I'm probably saying that incorrectly, but whether it's their brand or any other, this is a pretty well laid out, laid out page as far as, you know, what is hygroscopic. And they talk about the principles of what a filament dryer does. And this is a great picture right here because what they're showing is how the filament will absorb the moisture. And what a good filament dryer will do is it'll have a good temperature sensor, humidity sensor on board. And what it can do is blow via convection that hot air and get those molecules to the surface. And then with the additional air, you know, the convection and the you know, blast of that air escaping, uh, that moisture is going to escape as well, which leaves you with a much drier and a better and ready to print filament. So the website lays it out very nicely as far as the whole process of getting the moisture out of your material. Now, let's talk about the different materials that are out there. When people think of PLA, they just think that PLA doesn't absorb any moisture. It's not hygroscopic. I'm going to leave it out. I've never had any issues, blah, blah, blah. But it also depends on where you live. I mean, where I live in the Northeast, I live in the state of Maine uh, in the United States. Uh, it does get fairly humid here during the winter. And I have noticed on my materials uh, that sometimes they can get very, uh, some of the older ones will break uh, and that can be sol solved by drying. Uh, and I've noticed some materials that uh, when I've gone to print them, I, I will notice stringing. And sometimes on the top surface, I'll notice pillowing, which is something I've seen with tough PLAs and PLA pluses and others. So on the PLA level, I still think it's a good idea to dry that material before use because, <laughs> you know, why, why spend all that time trying to calibrate flow and stringing and, and, and other issues when it could just be as simple as, hey, it's not a problem with your slicer. It's not a problem with your E-steps or other part of your machine. It could just be you have damp material. So that's PLA. The other big offender that we know about is PETG. We know PETG and we know nylon is extraordinarily hygroscopic and those can be real tough to work with because once they get the moisture in them, sometimes they get the steam, sometimes they get the popping, or sometimes they'll just have a terrible time <laughs> just getting it out of the hot end. So those are two materials that we know can be real problematic when they're wet. And uh, that was one of the ones to look for. ABS is another one that you know, most people, when you talk about, you know, ABS or some of the other materials, they just say, oh, no, no, th th there's no issues with ABS. ABS is just fine. It, it's not very hygroscopic. But I want to point out something to you, and I just want to kind of lean over to the large-scale 3D printing, which I've been part of well, at my job. And I want to show you something in well, one of the pictures over here. Uh, some of the things that we do in large-scale 3D printing and in medium-scale 3D printing, which is the machines that are still huge compared to what we have, but what they do with their pellets. 
Okay, so here is from my video on the world's largest 3D printer. I did this four years ago, and this is where I work, and this is our Ingersoll 3D printer, which is no longer the world's largest 3D printer. It's been surpassed by another one. But over here, and I'm moving my mouse around back here, what they do with large-scale 3D printers is there's a little hopper over here, and that's where the pellets are. And what, they, what happens is they're vacuumed into this drying station, and prior to doing the print, the pellets are dried for a certain amount of time for a certain temperature just like we do with our filament dryers and then when it's time to print those materials are ready to go and what happens is the vacuum line and it goes up through here and it feeds into the machine and the machine is fed those dried pellets that in turn go to the printer and produce our nice giant 3d prints in this case you know this one did and i'll play it real quick here just for funsies and there it goes. That is our uh, time lapse of the uh, uh, 3D printed boat that was done several years ago. And as you can see, that's done with ABS and carbon fiber. And again, you can see in the background here, this little hopper is just <laughs> keeps on tipping over uh, to fill with more and more and more material. So just because you believe ABS does not need to be uh, dried, let me just assure you that at the large scale, <laughs> they dry all materials before use. So what's the big deal? What's, what's, what does this have to do with this? Well, essentially, um, our filament is the exact same stuff. Uh, it's just that when it comes off the line, uh, it comes off as a filament, uh, whereas the stuff that's being used in large scale is chopped up into pellets. So same stuff. So the point I'm trying to make is that you may not think you need to dry any of the materials, but I can tell you that very similar materials of these are being used at a larger scale where they're chopped up in the pellets and they are dried before use, fed into these big giant machines and these make these big giant prints. So if it's good for them, maybe it's good for us. So when it comes to filament dryers, who do you believe? Because there's a lot of people out there that receive these filament dryers and the manufacturers say, hey, plug my product and here's my affiliate code. You know, go ahead. If you if you put this on your video, give this link and you'll earn a commission. And I mean, we're all guilty. We all want you guys to click our links and we earn commissions. But some of these devices, <laughs> one more so than other, just doesn't work right. So I am not the ultimate source of what filament dryer is the best, but I can tell you someone who's really good. And I'm going to share that right now. My tech fun. This guy is amazing. He's a scientist and he has all kinds of comparison between materials, filament dryers. He, I think he's even done a few printers here and there. Uh, he does some great videos and he's very scientific in his approach. As a matter of fact, his website over here, mytechfun.com, what he does is under filament dryers, if you go under other and filament dryers, you'll find it. And he goes through the various dryers that he's tested and he's actually measured how much water has been removed after 30 minutes. He gives those results, how much has been removed after an hour. Uh, not only their max temp, but also their noise, you know, because you have to live with these machines. And uh, even more information as far as suggested drying temperatures uh, that he's come across. So he's an excellent resource. He's been kind of my go-to person as of the person I listen to if I'm looking around for a filament dryer. And uh, I would encourage you to check out his YouTube and his link. All right, let's talk about what to look for and some of the things I want to point out because I have several of these units that were sent to me and I want to share with you basically, um, I, I definitely have some favorites here and I'll explain why they're my favorites and there's a few here that are not so great. So let me start with the first one that's sitting right here. So this right here, this was sent to me as a beta, which I, um, it was interesting because uh, when this was received, it would not get beyond a certain temperature. I had to take it apart, move the thermosistor. Uh, but this is uh, what's called the Grat Kit, and I've seen uh, various reviews on these on YouTube. And I'm not going to get too in-depth because I'm not turning this into a dryer review. But with this particular model, the buttons and pressing everything on here, you have to do like multiple presses on multiple. It's just, it's a mess. It's extraordinarily loud. And... A couple of the things I would point out is one of the things you want to look for inside these units is, okay, so we have uh, inside here where I have the power brick and everything. So it's heated at the bottom here. That's cool. Uh, we got the nice little roller. That's going to be decent. And when I close this, 
So one of the things I'm wondering is, okay, so I'm going to be drying filament in here. So where does the moisture escape? And as I'm looking here, I'm not really seeing anything. I, I, I see maybe a little divot here, but that's, that's just part of the forming of the material. The only hole I see here is a little tiny one back here. And then the other question I have is, well, how do I get my filament out of here? And the only thing I see is a tiny little hole in the back over here. So as for, yeah, this right here. So this is not one that I was very fond of, even after I did the repairs they suggested. I know they've made a newer model. Um, the reviews I've seen on this model have not been very good. Um, but again, a couple of things you want to look for, uh, especially when you're looking at the model pictures is, okay, so this is going to dry. Where's the moisture going to go? Where's the holes? And how am I going to route my filament out of this? And this just has very limited options. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, this is the E-Box. I believe this is by E-Sun. Yes, I'm correct. I think they have a newer version of this. And again, the interface and the screen I found to be very easy to use. Uh, they give you this little adapter piece here in the front so you can kind of control, uh, you know, how you want the filament to come out or whether you want to spring out top or head downward. And in my case, I have it going down because this sits on top of the enclosure and the filament just works this way straight down. So that's fine. Uh, looking inside, yeah, we do have rollers. We have heater. That's good. Um, we have the little fan in the back, so that's good. And again, the issue that I have with this one, as you look at the clear, is like, okay, well, we're heating the air, but where does it go? And I've noticed in this particular model, when I've dried some filament that was definitely had some uh, humidity in it, uh, I did notice that at the very top here, I could see um, little droplets <laughs> condensing up top. So while it was doing a good job as far as, you know, the interface and routing the filament the way I wanted it to go, uh, this really doesn't have any place for the, uh, you know, the moisture that you're pulling out of the filament to go. It's kind of trapped in there. So um, close, but not quite what we're looking for. Okay, this is the fixed dry NT1. And as we're looking at it, okay, this is interesting because and again, it's black, so it makes it a little hard to see, but you can see I have, yeah, I have here and here, and I have, let me pop this, the seal's up really tight. So I have all kinds of place to feed the material out, and look at this, I have some holes up top here, so the hot air is going to get out. Okay, that looks promising. And as I look inside this thing, I can fit two rolls, so this is nice. Um, one, two. And the heater's in the middle, and I have this nice little deflector here because the heater is right there. So this deflector is going to make sure that the heat is not directly blasting straight up. It's actually going to blow it out. Okay, that sounds good. But we have a little bit of an issue because on the manual, and of course we should all be reading the manual here to see how all these things work, the first thing the manual points out is how to use the interface. And as you go down a little bit, what the manual states is that this does not have a temperature sensor. It does indeed have this little humidity sensor. So it's telling me what the humidity inside the box is. But what this unit does is it runs a pre-programmed algorithm, <laughs> again, but with no temperature sensor on board, and it runs its own little pre-programmed loop of what it thinks, whatever temperature you've entered. So if you've entered 55C or 60C, you know, it's, it's going to try to get there. If you're using, you know, nylon or other materials where you're going to go hotter, it's going to calculate based on its algorithm and do the same thing. Now, the big problem with this is, of course, it doesn't have a temperature sensor. It's just randomly making things up as it goes. And I did spend a little bit of time. I did put uh, a thermosistor in here on my, from my multimeter, and I also put an Adafruit uh, humidity and temperature sensor in here and did some tests. And I found that when this thing was running at 60, it was bouncing between 50 and 55. Uh, so it was never really hitting that, that temperature. Uh, when I tried higher temperatures, it was all over the place. So it was a, a bit of a real letdown. Um, the other thing I can point out is there are other people that have done reviews on these things. 
and have come across, the, actually, uh, you know, my, uh, my tech fund uh, also had uh, similar issues with this as well, too, because this could sometimes hit as high as 70 degrees. So I did note that when I did put some filament in here, um, I can't remember if it was PETG or another one, um, it, it was feeling pretty borderline melted because, again, no temperature sensor, and it just does its own thing. So, you know, it's too bad because there were a lot of things to like about this thing. I mean, this thing seals up and it seals tight. I mean, getting this thing off here can be a little bit of a trick. It's too bad it doesn't have handles. But the fact that it doesn't have a temp sensor and it's just guessing, uh, it's just, that's not, no, you don't want that. You, 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 if you're going to be heating your filament and cooking your filament here, uh, you, you need precise control to make sure you're getting the exact temperatures because the worst thing you can do is put your material in here and wind up melting it or, you know, <laughs> it, it, uh, all kinds of badness. So, yeah, so this one, uh, again, I'm not doing reviews, but I'm just telling you that yeah, I've used these things. And just based on the documentation, it says it doesn't have a temp sensor. And my experience it, with it being just overshooting and undershooting, do not buy. Next one. So this is the Ibo Cyclops and uh, another dual roll. And again, we have all kinds of plugs and what have you as far as where we want to plug this in. And I've used this several times and I like it a lot. Um, I'm not crazy about these, you know, little, you got to replace the battery on it as far as for the humidity sensor. But I have found that um, on the materials that I've had that I knew I'd be printing for a long time that would be sensitive to moisture, uh, it's done a great job. The only thing I'm not crazy about is, I mean, it does have this diffuser up top. I, I wish it was a little bit bigger. And I do like these. These rollers work just fine. You get the little sensor here in the top that's reading the temperature. So kudos to them. The one thing about this is that it has, I don't know if it's a relay or whatever it's using inside, but you'll hear a noticeable click as it goes back and forth, as it reaches the temperature, you know, so you'll hear it heating off on, off on. And it does make a notable click as it's doing it because that, that, that's how it does it. So if you're going to be working next to this machine um, while it's printing, um, and it, you will hear that. And if that drives you crazy, then yeah, this may not be the guy for you. But of all the dryers I have that I use uh, on printers when they're actually printing, this one is one of my favorite. They have a newer model, and uh, um, that uh, I, I think is a little bit bigger version of this. It's a little bit of a, more of a box versus this rounded version. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it's called the uh, Polyphemus or something. They've got some really interesting names here. But uh, I do like this one. Uh, this is a, a recommend. The only thing that I am noticing on some of these dryers is that, yeah, the double roll is nice. But for those of us that are using larger spools, like three kilogram or even bigger, um, nothing really, because what would be nice is if there was a way to make this a little bit taller. And I'm sure someone's going to engineer a way to make this stand a little bit taller. And that's, that would be really, really cool because it's really nice to be able to have the support for the big spools. But anyway, before I go off on a tangent, yes, this one is good. I like it a lot. Um, they have a newer model that you may even like even better. It has little handles and such, so this comes off better. But yeah, this one's been good. Okay, this one's my favorite one. This is my print dry. And this has been subsequently replaced with what they call the print dry pro. I think they have a two and a three now. What this is, is it looks just like a food dehydrator and yeah, it, it can do that. Now, as it's set up right now, uh, I have two spools in here and I have a little tray in the middle so it can also dry my desiccants, which as you can see by their color, there's a couple that are blue here. So definitely need some time uh, either in here or uh, usually with the desiccants, I'll put those in the oven for a half hour, flip them over, do them for another half hour, but back on top of it. So, this, I think, has been the best investment I've made. This is the print, uh, print dry, and I bought the professional model, and I can show you they have a pre-release. Uh, I don't think they released a three yet. Let me share that on screen. And this is, so it's $199, and I know you're going to squawk, $199, these filament dryers you've been showing me are between $40 and $80. Yep, yeah, but let me, let me explain my pitch on these. So you can buy the base model like this, or you can get the additional chamber and a large spool kit. And it didn't change pictures like I expected. Here it is. It looks just like that. It doesn't show the large chamber, but let me show you. 
Okay, I'm gonna go to this camera here. And so what we got is this is our Print Dry Pro. And okay, and then if you do the, uh, the extra bundle, you get these three extra containers. So what's so good about that? Well, let me tell you. So you can add in these two guys. And what you have now is you can put two more in here, throw the cover on there, and you're good to go. Now, what about, gee whiz, you know, I have all these great big three kilogram spools. I can't put those in those other guys, but you can put it in here. Let me show you. I feel like it's a Ronco commercial, but anyway. So let me pull these dudes out, put this guy in, and it comes with an extra long, Aluminum rod, you throw that guy there. Actually, we should probably go with one more level of height, but that's okay for demonstration. And we would pull this guy out of here as I bash my microphone and ta-da. So now you have the ability to dry those large rolls of filament, as well as doing four at a time of your others. And not only that, <laughs> boy, I, and I feel like it does sound like a pitch, doesn't it? But anyway, you also have these holes here. So if you wanted to, you could route the filament through the hole and you could route this to your machine and you could physically print from this thing. But that's not how I use this thing. What I like to do is the practice I like to do is before any print, I take the materials, I review the safety document sheets that the filament makers offer and I check to see do the materials require drying before use. Some will say they do, some will say only if it's already been open, but I just like to check. And usually they'll also recommend a drying temperature and how long. So what I'll do is I'll put my material, whether it's a giant roll or if it's a couple of these little guys that I'm using on a couple of machines, what I'll do is I'll dry it on, on this to print and dry and most of the time it's 55 C for four hours or whatever. And then what I do is I don't take these little filament dryers and keep on doing that. What I then do, and this has been, I've done videos on this before. This is another a great investment. There may be others, but this is called the Polymaker Polybox. And essentially it's a dry box. And as I make a mess here, so at the bottom we have our little rollers and then what they include in which we can also we can dry these in the oven or we can use them also in the print dry pro we throw these desiccants in there we throw in these little things to cover up our filament would go inside here if you're using one of these large spools guess what there is on thingiverse an adapter you can make this a little taller it can actually support these three kilogram spools but anyway the other thing I've done is I bought a bunch of these coupler kits. Uh, you can find these from Capricorn or you can get them also on Amazon or elsewhere. Because what I do is once I have the filament in here, I run the filament down through the tube. I get this all nice and sealed up. And then I route this inside the enclosure into the hot end of the 3D printer. So what I've done is I've already spent the time and energy to dry the material. And now I'm ready to print. And now I'm putting it inside this dry box, which is full of these desiccants here, which is gonna control the humidity at which the material is being uh, stored at. And then off I go. So this combination for me has not only worked extremely well, but I found it to be extremely reliable and it saves on power. I mean, it's, I have 22 3D printers down here. I have 16 enclosures and it's just not practical to put independent filament dryers on each and every machine. Now, if I'm dealing with materials that I know are very hygroscopic, if I'm gonna be printing nylon or maybe some PTG that's a little on the fussy side, yeah, sure. Then I'll use one of those filament dryers, run it at the appropriate temperature while it's being printed. But for the majority of my prints, being PLA, PLA Pro, or some other stuff, I find that the central dryer, immediately put it in the dry box, run it and print, and you're good to go. But there's more. So let's talk about desiccant. Now I've seen people throw all kinds of silica gel in there surrounding their materials with it and thinking that, well, if I throw my filament and with a bunch of these little packets here, it's gonna dry my material. No, because we already covered, you need to actively heat to get that moisture to the top of the filament and then the convection, get it out. 
So just surrounding your material with desiccants is not going to do the job. Now, as you can see in the background here, I have mine in cereal tubs and I have a video I can link to where I found that these cereal tubs work remarkably well. They're about uh, 23 ish, 24 bucks. You get four containers. So, you know, six bucks each. Uh, and then what I do is I put my material in there. I throw a bunch of desiccant in and boom, it's a great way to store stuff. Now, when it comes to like in here or even in how you store your material, you have two options. You can do silica and that's fine. And what you want to do is when these guys turn color, if you follow the instructions that the manufacturer says, uh, generally they'll tell you to put it in the oven for 300 degrees or 250 degrees Fahrenheit, or it depends on the brand, whatever. But they'll tell you, they'll generally say like what Wise Dry says for 30 minutes, then flip it over, do it for another half hour. And these guys will come out bright orange and you're good to go. Okay, this is highly absorbent activated alumina composition and I mean, you can find this elsewhere, but what's cool about slice engineering is it's already put in a little container. It's got a little cap and they include a little card uh, that will change color as it gains uh, moisture, kind of indicating when it's time to dry these guys, because as these are right now, you really, they're white <laughs> and they'll stay white, whether they're damp <laughs> or dry. So you need the card they include to have some sort of gauge as to, hey, is it time to dry these or not? And same story as with this material. The pro of this is it's way more absorbent. If you are in an environment where you really need, if you're gonna use a dry box like this and you need the most powerful desiccant you can get, this is the stuff. Okay, this was kind of a whirlwind of why do you dry your material? What does it do for you? Um, some of the devices that can dry material for you. Uh, and then talking about desiccants. So I hope this all makes sense. I look forward to your comments in the comment section down below. Educate me if I've got anything wrong here or if you've had different experiences, I'd like to hear about it. And if you're wondering what I'm up to, check out my social media I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course here on YouTube. So that's it for this time. I hope you've enjoyed this and all these goodies here I brought out to show you. And that's it for this time. Remember, if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. Check out our affiliate links down below. There are some coupon codes that will save you some money. And that's all for this time. Please remember, please print safe.